You've probably noticed that I've made uh, quite a few adaptations to my mill. Uh, believe it or not, this started out as a standard Sherline 2000 mill, and uh, that mill served me well for a while, but it seemed that every project I made was an inch or two larger than the work envelope on that mill, and um, I just knew I needed a, a slightly bigger mill, um, and the what you're looking at here, uh, most of the adaptations come from a company called A to Z. They make um, well, a larger envelope and a more rigid mill, but it uses many of the Sherline parts, so I was able to just move my parts from my old Sherline onto this um, setup. Um, I added uh, bellows, as you can see, um, which are fantastic. I mean, once you've covered your ways, uh, it's so much easier to keep the machine uh, tuned up. I mean, you do have to remember to open them up every once in a while and oil the ways. Um, but beyond that, it keeps all the chips off the screws and off the, um, off the dovetails and so forth, and it makes a very big difference. Um, I've also met, I, I actually built my own head for the mill. I never liked the idea of having the motor and the speed control sitting all the way out on the arm at the, uh, you know, at the end and, and actually in your face. So what I did was, I, I totally took, uh, I, I built a new head from scratch. And it has a number of features on it. Um, one is that obviously I have pushed the, um, I've pushed the motor all the way, to, all the way to the back, you know, closest to the Z column, um, for better weight distribution, and also it just gets it out of the way. You know, when you've got to get in tight and take some measurements, you know, work with your uh, with your indicator or whatever, the motor was always banging me in the head. And uh, likewise, uh, the speed controller has been removed. With that, I actually uh, built it into its, its own box. This is the Sherline speed controller. I've just built it into my own box. But I've also wired it up to my, um, my Gecko uh, 540 to let Mach 3 turn, uh, set the speed of the, uh, of the spindle. Now, uh, the, way I the way I did this is, right now it's in what's labeled, I don't know if you can see the engravings I put on here, but it's in computer mode, which means that, you know, if Mach 3 sends uh, an S1500 command, it's going to set the spindle at 1500 RPM, and it's just going to run. If I need to go to manual mode, I just switch it into manual mode, and this uh, pot still works. And then this is just an auto-off switch like the old one had. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a very difficult modification if your uh, controller board supports that. Um, but it makes such a big difference, you know, not having to, uh, you know, take my, you know, I've got a laser tack uh, that I used to use to, um, I still use it, but I, you know, I used to have to use this all the time, you know, to measure the, um, you know, the spindle RPM by, you know, setting it up here and, well, you know how that works. But anyway, by getting all of these pieces out of the way, and actually the way I'm showing it to you right now, um, with the uh, spindle control box sitting there, actually I keep it um, on a shelf which sits, be sits below the mill, so that's actually out of the way as well. Um, but back to the, uh, the head that I created here, and you can see that I've got my dual D DTIs in, in the um, chucked up right now. The, the spindle is actually free to, to rotate, not, not rotate, but you know, be adjusted this way 
and this way, all with a bunch of set screws. I've got screws here and underneath here to, to, to adjust the left to right movement and <coughs> excuse me there's an and there's a um, a knuckle joint in here which is actually what was on the the old Sherline 2000 you know their ability to uh, to tilt the head I just took that part put it in here and mounted it um, and then with a screw here and, and and a mating one underneath I can move the head uh, you know what's called the nod on the head. So number of set screws and uh, and this device which I you know some people make their own I I mean this device was under a hundred dollars and um, you know you'd be hard-pressed to buy two indicators and the parts just to make it for that price so I took the shortcut it's made by a company called uh, Edge Technology but anyway you know, in this position, you know, you rotate it until the indicators match up, and then you just, you know, move it 90 degrees and, uh, and make the other adjustment until they line up, and you're done. It, 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 with this setup, it just takes me a matter of moments to, uh, to retram my mill, and uh, I usually do that before I, you know, start anything new. Um, Anyway, I just thought I, I would point out those things because I know you're seeing a lot of these things in the uh, in the other videos, and uh, I just thought I'd point out what the heck I'm doing here. The way that I actually uh, did all this um, is going to be very specific to your mill. I mean, you know. I, there's not. It's it's just a matter of figuring out what you want to do and how it's going to connect up to whatever kind of mill you have, or maybe just leave well enough alone. But if you're like me and you want to get everything just the way you want it, um, this really wasn't that difficult to design. It was you know there are a lot of parts that make it up, so it, it took some time. But um, you know I can I've got screws in here that allow me to set the belt tension. Um, there, there are just a lot of adjustments in here that make it, um, I think, a lot better than what came from the factory. So I just thought I'd point that stuff out to you because you're probably wondering what the heck kind of mill this is. Um, and now you know.